The Jell-O program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Kenny Baker, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with It's All Yours. It seems that every year the Easter parade gets more and more colorful. And today, when I was watching those gay new hats go by, an old song kept running through my head. The flowers that bloom in the spring, tra-la, the flowers that bloom in the spring. Well, I was thinking that for bright color, vivid gaiety, and downright cheerfulness, those flowers haven't a thing on Jell-O. For Jell-O's six colors are glowing with beauty and cheer. And Jell-O's six flavors, strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime, are chuck full of delicious, extra-rich goodness, deep and full-bodied and satisfying. That's why Jell-O desserts are always fun to serve, because you know that everybody will enjoy them. So for bright spring color and refreshing, extra-rich flavor, look for those big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O, and Jell-O spells a treat. played by the orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a man who was the sensation of the Easter parade this morning in his frock coat, white spats, and beanie, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny, a page from Esquire talking. And Don, you're mistaken, I was not wearing a beanie. That was my derby hat, but the brim blew off. <laughs> I have more trouble with that hat. I think I'll grow geraniums in it. Uh, anyway, Don, uh, wasn't it grand today? Did you ever see so many people out promenading? It was a lovely sight, Jack, and I thought you looked quite dapper. Thanks. But I noticed you had your polar bear with you. What was the idea of taking Carmichael along? Well, I had to take him. You see, when I left the house this morning, he grabbed a hold of the seat of my pants and refused to let go. <laughs> what could I do? Well, Jack, supposing he did rip your pants, you could have put on another pair. Don, his grip was a little deeper than that. <laughs> So I took him along And you know, Don, there was one time when he embarrassed me something awful Here we were walking along Hollywood Boulevard Oh, it was terrible What happened? Well, just as we got to Grauman's Chinese Theater Carmichael ran into the forecourt and put his footprints in the manager <laughs> Oh, I nearly died Oh, that must have been embarrassing Was the manager sore about it? Don, where he told us to go is no place for a polar bear <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't let that bother us Went right along with our stroll Say, uh, Jack, did you see Phil Harris on the boulevard this morning? He had on the loudest suit I've ever seen in my life It was really violent uh, No, I didn't see him, Don But I can imagine what Phil's suit was like You see, he and Rochester have the same tailor <laughs> <laughs> Same tailor? Well, he isn't exactly a tailor He specializes in beach umbrellas <laughs> A fellow by the name of Neon Cohen. Uh, by the way, uh, where is Phil, our new movie star? Oh, he hasn't come in yet. Incidentally, Jack, how's Phil coming along in your picture? Oh, he's all right, Don, but he's getting so conceited. My, you, you see, it's awfully crowded at Paramount, and they're short of dressing rooms, so Phil has been changing his clothes in a barrel. You know? In a barrel? Well, what's conceited about that? Well, yesterday he asked him to put a star on it. <laughs> Not only that, he's got lace curtains over the bunghole. <laughs> I tell you, I tell you, Don, if he, if he doesn't... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Happy Easter. Thanks. Say, you look stunning in your new dress. Where'd you get it? Well, don't you remember, Jack? You told me to buy a dress for an Easter present and send you the bill. I said that? When did I ever say that? Two weeks ago when you were sick in bed with a bad cold. Oh, well, I must have been delirious that night. <laughs> what else? Now, Mary, that's just taking an unfair advantage. How much did the dress cost? Eighty-two fifty. dollars Yes! <laughs> well, don't sit down in it. It's going back tomorrow. <laughs> Eighty-two fifty. I could buy four suits for that. 
Sure you could. Never mind. You walk up so high to buy a suit of clothes, your ears pop. <laughs> all right, all right, that's enough. Huh? Say, Mary, I saw you on the boulevard this morning. Who was that good-looking fellow you were with? Oh, uh, wasn't he handsome, Don? Hmm. You know, Jack, while I was strolling along, I met the cutest boy. Yeah. He's a doll. Oh, I'll bet. How'd you meet him? Well, it was all an accident, really. Hmm. <laughs> you see, I was walking down the street, and I just happened to drop my handkerchief, and he picked it up. Oh, you happened to drop it. Yeah. <laughs> then I got so nervous, I dropped my gloves. Oh, both of them? No, one at a time. <laughs> well, that was some accident, huh? Gee, he's cute. His name is Wendell. Well, that's an adorable name. Huh? And he's so smart, Jack. You know, he's a college boy. A college boy, eh? What's he taking up? Uh, chemistry and goldfish swallowing. <laughs> oh, that's a marvelous profession. You know, Mary, you meet the most interesting people. Wendell. What's his last name? Kendall. Oh. Wendell Kendall. The second. That's all he needs. <laughs> Anyway, Mary, I don't want you to go out with strangers. It isn't nice, and I don't like it. I'll bring him over sometime, Jack. You'll be crazy about it. I can hardly wait. Oh, everybody rise. Here comes His Majesty, the King of the Cinema. Hello, Phil. I say there, old fellow, am I again the nucleus of your disparaging remarks? Isn't that awful? <laughs> <laughs> now, look here, Twitch. <laughs> Now, get off your high horse. You're not the only guy that ever made a picture. Guy? My word, your English is ghastly. Oh, it is all of this. <laughs> now, listen, Phil, don't be so highbrow. I remember you when you led your orchestra with a rolled-up racing form. <laughs> <laughs> now, while I think of it, I wish you wouldn't go around telling people that you're the star of my picture. You're nothing but a stooge, and you know us. Stooge? How can I be a stooge when I did a big love scene yesterday with Dorothy Lamour? Sure you did, but the minute you left the room, who do you think rushed in and kissed her? I did. That's like having stewed prunes after crepe Suzette. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to Phil. I've been in pictures quite a while, Phil, and I don't like to say this. But you have absolutely no screen personality. No personality? What are you talking about? I'm grinning all the time. That's uh, just it. All you can see is teeth. <laughs> Your mouth looks like an elk's convention. <laughs> Fine star. Sure I'm a star. Now, Phil Harris, I'm the star of this picture, so let's forget it. You are not. I am, too. You are not. I am, too. Boys, boys, ladies and gentlemen, please understand that these two hams are not arguing about Jell-O. Hmm. It is agreed by all that this Look tempting dessert is not I'm a only a bigger star than you are. Oh, you are, eh? Yes, yes I am. Oh, yeah? Flavors, yeah. Uh, you Lansbury call yourself Perry. a star. Oh, oh I am a star. star. Now look what you fellas made me do. Uh, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Don, but Phil started it. Now, Phil, let's stop with our personal arguments. You've still got a job to do here, so pick up your baton and play something. I'm not using a baton anymore. From now on, I'm going to conduct with my hands, like Stokowski. <laughs> Just keep time. That's all I ask. <laughs> Go ahead, genius. Hold it a second. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I'm a little Easter bunny. Each year I bring you greetings funny. But now I'm in a hurry, so I'll lay my egg and away I go. Get out of here! A fine rabbit with no fur. Play.
hold tight conducted by Phil Harris with his hands. I'm just saying that so the orchestra boys will know. They never look at them, folks. <laughs> and, Phil, I must admit that it's more impressive when you conduct with your hands. Is it really? Yes, that phony diamond of yours shows up much better. <laughs> What do you mean, phony? This ring cost me $12 on a punch board. Well, if you didn't get a turkey with it, you got jit. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, as our play tonight is rather long, I think we ought to proceed with the casting without further ado. Are we all here? All but me. Oh, hello, Kenny. Why are you so late? Well, we had an Easter egg hunt at our house this morning, and I just got through. Oh, an Easter egg hunt, eh? Say, that's fun. <laughs> yeah. And you know what, Jack? I found five eggs all by myself. Five eggs, that's marvelous. Where'd you find them? Well, I found one under the sofa, one in the back of the clock, and three under a hen. <laughs> well, that's some trick, finding three eggs under a hen. If I'd have waited, I'd have got four. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Huh? Anyway, Kenny, you got here just in time for our play. Uh, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, the Benny Bagel Benders <laughs> will uh, present their version of that popular Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer picture, that drama of life among the nurses in a big city hospital entitled Four Girls in White. Now, inasmuch as we are short of the fair sex on this program, Kenny Baker, Don Wilson, and Phil Harris will be nurses. You mean we gotta be girls? You said it, sister. <laughs> Now, Mary, uh, you're going to be a girl, too. Okay, I'll talk in a high voice. That's the idea. <laughs> now, I'm going to play the part of Dr. DeSchnook, head of the hospital. Well, why don't you be a girl, too, you sissy? Kenny, I'm casting this play. So hush up, honey child, let's pappy slappy till you're happy. <laughs> now, this play will go on... You would hit a woman. Quiet. <laughs> Uh, now, this play will go on immediately after Kenny's song. Go ahead, Kenny. Wait a minute. Hello? Who? Miss Livingston? Yes, yeah, she's here. Who's calling, please? It is, too, some of my blank business. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, listen here, buddy. Tell me who you are. Oh, give me that phone, Jack. Fresh guy. Hello? Why, Wendell Kendall, of all people. I might have guessed it. Uh, what's that, Wendell? Oh, don't mind, Jack. He's got a toothache. I have not. You would if you could. Now, Mary. <laughs> Gee, it's nice of you to call, Wendell. Yes, I'd love to see you tonight. Where will we go? Oh, my house? There's a spendthrift if I ever saw one. <laughs> well, look, Wendell, all I've got to eat in the house is ketchup. Why don't you stop at the delicatessen and buy some sandwiches? Oh, you like ketchup. <laughs> Why don't you ask him to bring his bagpipes? He can play while you're fixing dinner. Oh, shh. Uh, uh, say, Wendell, after we eat, let's go and see Gunga Dean. He's playing right near my house. What? Okay, see you later. Goodbye. Oh, so he's going to take you to see Gunga Dean, eh? No, he's going to bring the poem over and read it to me. <laughs> oh, that'll be ducky. There's nothing like a poem with ketchup. <laughs> Wendell Kendall, what a name. Sing, Kenny. <laughs> Another night of dreaming, drifting on a golden sea. A night of make believing with a one man for me. When twilight has gone and the world slumbers on, I'm building a sail. Star up above knows my secret of love. I'm building a sailboat of dreams. Someday, someday, I will sail away and find you somewhere. Till dreams all come true, till the 
sung by Kenny Baker. And Kenny, now that your number is over, I'd like to remind you that last Sunday when you were mad, you said you weren't going to sing at all today. I did not. I said I wasn't going to sing good. Well, you did sing good, so ha-ha. I could have done better, so ho-ho. <laughs> and now, folks, leaving our childhood behind us, we will proceed with tonight's drama, Four Girls in White. And remember, folks, Kenny Don nurses. Are you all dressed, girls? Yeah. Me too. I rolled my stockings. Is it all right? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Don, but you've, you've got your skirt on upside down. How else could he get into it? That's right. <laughs> and, Don, you don't wear a girdle on the outside. <laughs> now, the uh, scene of our play... Holy smoke, I feel like a sultan with these bloomers on. <laughs> well, pull them up a little, my goodness. <laughs> Now, the, uh, the scene of our play... Hey, Jack, where does this go? Kenny, put that down. <laughs> now, the uh, scene of our play is the General Hospital in a large American city where Dr. DeSchnook is about to give a lecture to his class of student nurses. Curtain. Music. <laughs> No, Good morning, 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 students. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning, morning Dr. Schnook. Now, girls, before we begin, you must realize that you are now embarking on a new and important career. It is not an easy one, girls. <laughs> but in two short years, you will graduate and become full-fledged nurses. Aren't you happy? Aren't you thrilled? Aren't you inspired? Well, as an average girl, I'd say no. <laughs> now, Phyllis, please. <laughs> Uh, pay attention, girls. I will now call the roll. Marie Livingston. Marie, where are you? Here in the back, quack. Oh. <laughs> I didn't see you. Uh, Dolores Wilson. Here, doctor. Here, doctor. Dolores, even though you occupy two seats, just answer once. <laughs> uh, Phyllis Harris. Here, doctor, and I know my lessons like anything. That's fine, Phyllis. Now, if you'll just shave before you come to class, everything will be lovely. And pull up those bloomers. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Peaches Baker. <laughs> Peaches Baker. Oh, this is silly. I don't want to play. Peaches, I'm going to can you if you don't behave. <laughs> oh, oh brother. <laughs> now, girls, we will take up our classwork. Peaches Baker. Yes, doctor. If you were in the clinic and a little boy came in with tiny red spots all over his face, what would he have? Freckles. <laughs> no, it's measles, but you were close. For me, that's perfect. Sit down. <laughs> Now, Phyllis. Yes, Doc? I want you to tell us the difference between a bunion and a corn. A bunion and a corn? Yes. Well, a bunion is a lump on your foot. Uh-huh. But I don't know what corn is. Not much, you <laughs> don't. <laughs> and pull up those bloomers. <laughs> You're... 
<laughs> You're next, Marie. Yes, Dr. DeChnook. Now tell me, who was Louis Pasteur? A very famous medical scientist. Very good. And where did he do most of his work? At Warner Brothers Studios. <laughs> That's right, under the name of Paul Muni. Now, Phyllis, uh, name three well-known anesthetics. What's that, Doc? I said name three well-known anesthetics. Gas, ether, and Joe Lewis. Correct. <laughs> Gin is good, too. <laughs> We're not interested in that, you naughty girl. And take that cigar out of your mouth. Now, Peaches Baker. Peaches, yet. <laughs> now, Peaches, can you tell us what is the world's record for the itch? Seven years. And who recently broke this record? Fred Allen. Right. <laughs> That's very good, Peaches. No kidding, Doc. Does Fred Allen really have the seven-year itch? That ain't gold he's digging for, Miss Harris. <laughs> now, let's see. Oh, Doctor, haven't you got a question for me? Yes, Dolores, and it's a real hard one. Now, if a... Jello, strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. Look for the big red letters on the box. Wait till I ask you. Don't be such a psychic. <laughs> or so psychic. <laughs> well, that's all the questions for today, girls. I'm going to the supply room to get some gauze, and then I'm going to show you how to bandage a broken arm. I'll be back in a second. Has he gone? Yeah. Gee, that doctor's an awful flirt. He keeps winking at me all the time. Me too. I get so embarrassed. What a masher. He's a masher. Last night, he asked me to go to Ocean Park with him. Ocean Park? Oh, I was there Tuesday. I met the cutest plumber. <laughs> Honest peaches, did you? <laughs> yeah, he wanted to marry me, but I told him I was a career girl. <laughs> uh, quiet, girls. He's coming back. Well, girls, here I am with the gauze. We will now take up bandaging, but first we need a broken arm. Dolores, break Phyllis's arm. Okay. Ow! Don't be a baby, Phyllis. Now, everybody take this gauze and wrap it around Phyllis's arm. Ready, get set, go! Ow! Ow! Pass it round and round. Use plenty of gauze. We're all finished, Doctor. Very good. Hey, let me out of here! <laughs> Good heavens, girls, you've wrapped peaches in there. Give me those scissors. Goodness, you're careless. Peaches, peaches, where are you? peek a -boo. <laughs> Now come out here with the rest of us. But you did very well, girls. Now our next subject... Hey, what about my bandage? Sorry, Phyllis, we're all through bandaging for today. Oh, you are, eh? What am I going to do with my arm? Well, you're not going to wave it at anybody. That I know. <laughs> and pull up your bloomer. Oh, doctor, Dr. D. Schnook. Yes, Miss Pasadena. What is it? There's a patient in your office and he has a sliver in his finger. A sliver? Rush him to the operating room immediately. Yes, sir. And by the way, Miss Pasadena, take off that bathing suit. You're a nurse now. Okay. Well, girls, I've got a real treat for you. I'm going to perform an operation. You can all watch me. Oh, oh, good, 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 good. Follow me, girls. We're off to the surgery. <laughs> Well, here we are, girls. Here's the operating room. Tickets, tickets, please. I'm the doctor. I get in for nothing. What about the dames? They're nurses. They look like the dead-end kids. Hey, Curly Locks. What? Pull up your bloomers. If I was the lady, I'd slug you. <laughs> Phyllis, please. He has glasses on. Oh, Miss Pasadena, is the patient ready? Yes, he's right there on the table. Oh, yes, there he is. Uh, how do you do, sir? Hello, stranger. <laughs> That voice sounds familiar. Now, just relax, old boy. Say, hey, wait a minute. What am I doing on the table? I'm going to operate on you. Well, take off the eight ball. I'm superstitious. Take it easy now. Be calm, and I'll have your tonsils out in a jiffy. What tonsils? I only got a sliver in my finger. I've got a special today. Sliver and tonsils, $75. <laughs> I don't want my tonsils out. Why not? Well, I opened my mouth. It wouldn't look sporty. <laughs> Never mind that. Lay down. Now, gather around, girls, and watch closely. Say, what is this, a preview? Now, Miss Livingston, administer the anesthetic. Okay. And it looks to me like I'm going to have a snappy Easter. Hmm. It's working fine. Now, uh, how do you feel? When my dream boat comes in. Bum, 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 It'll dock in a minute. <laughs> do you think the operation will be a success, Doctor? I never know, Miss Livingston. I never know. Oh, sweet mystery of life, I think you got me. 
A little more ether, Miss Livingston. Okay, Doctor. Ray the Pagliacci, <laughs> Mr. Jubilee Cassie, Crossing Tado, Rakabadi Salamanca Tombo. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> there he goes out like a light. Now for the operation. Marie, hand me the fourth test. Here you are, Doctor. Peaches, hand me the scalpel. Here you are, Doctor. Phyllis, pull up your broom. Okay, Doc. <laughs> Now stand back, everybody. I need room. Peanuts, popcorns, and programs. You can't tell a tonsil from an adenoid without a program. Give me one of those. Dolores, stand by with the anesthetic. I'm going to whack out these tonsils, or my name ain't Dr. D. Snook. Don't forget the sliver, please. Two hours later, the operation is over, and Dr. D. Snook is at the bedside of his patient, who's just coming out of the ether. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you are, sir. It's all over. That wasn't so bad, was it? Now, how do you feel? I'm feeling fine, Doc. And sure, I never felt better in my life, and I'm telling you the truth. Right. Good heavens, I changed his dialect! Come on, girls, let's run! If you're feeling like buying some new spring clothes and you want your husband in a good humor when you tell him, here's one way to work it. Give him this tempting new dessert for dinner tomorrow night. Make a delicious chocolate cream pie, rich and smooth and satisfying, and amazingly quick and easy to prepare with Jell-O chocolate pudding. For all you have to do is make your Jell-O chocolate pudding the same way as always. Follow the simple directions on the package. With only a few minutes cooking, you get creamy chocolate pudding with that old-fashioned homemade goodness. And it makes a perfect pie filling. Just pile it into a crisp brown pie crust, cover with a topping of foamy whipped cream or meringue, and you have the grandest chocolate pie that a hungry man ever put a fork to. All three new Jell-O puddings have a smooth texture and a marvelous flavor. There's Jell-O butterscotch pudding, rich with true butterscotch flavor. And there's Jell-O vanilla pudding, delicate and creamy. They're made with fine, wholesome ingredients, and they're just plain mouth-watering good. So ask your grocer tomorrow for Jell-O chocolate, butterscotch, and vanilla pudding. The real homemade kind. This is the last number of the 28th program in the new Jell-O series, and we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Well, folks, I hope you all liked our little play tonight, Four Girls and White. And oh, yes, uh, Don, Kenny, and Mary, I want to compliment you on your performance. You were very good. I was good, too, wasn't I, Jack? Yes, Phyllis, and pull up your bloomers. Good night, folks. <laughs> Kenny Baker appears on the Jell-O program through courtesy of Marvin LeRoy Productions. Heard on the program was It's All Yours from Stars in Your Eyes. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>